What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders, now Tyler Perry's sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night only on BET. Alright, sisters fans, we are back. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. We're talking season three, episode one when you're confused and I'm giving this episode a solid 7.5 out of 10. It was a very good premiere. I thought it was way better than the season two finale, but it still had its problems. And if you missed out on the live stream last night, then you missed a good one. We had a good time. Uh, we were on there for almost a, almost an hour. I mean, I want to say that we had a solid week of Tyler Perry content. Um, across the board, have and have not, sisters, house of pain, assisted living, and even bruh. I just finished watching bruh. Five solid episodes this week. This was all good stuff. So let me just say up front, thank the Lord my boo Jasmine did not die because I would have been so pissed off. Like if you saw my clip of, uh, what was it, Steve Harvey? Let me go ahead and insert that in the video right now. Oh, I'm not a... Fuck you didn't. Oh, I know. For real, like if you thought I was pissed off about Gene, Jasmine was really when it set me off. Because I was like, well, damn, if Jasmine is dead, then that means I don't think I should use Crystal Lee Naomi's intro anymore. <laughs> so there's that. But in any case, before moving forward in the video, please take a moment to hit like because Sisters is back. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Also, I did see for those who are fans of Ashley Miller's channel, she actually posted her review of Sisters Season 3 Episode 1. So I do believe she has also added Sisters to her review list. So if you're a fan of her channel, make sure you check out her reviews as well as mine. So, without further ado, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to split the review up. Instead of talking about things in the order they occurred, I'll talk about the characters separately because that makes the most sense because this episode was running. Like, it was going from place to place to place to place. If there was one scene I could do without, it would probably be the Karen and Aaron stuff. I did rewatch it, though. It was good for what it was, but I could have done without it. But here we go. And I'll try to make it make sense. So let's talk about all the Andy scenes first, because I didn't really want to buy the fact this was a setup. But the more that I thought about it and then I rewatched the scenes, it actually makes sense. And I'll do a separate video on that, of course. But in any case... Jasmine is pretty much making Andy beg for her life. And this reminded me of, uh, what was that movie, Next Friday, when Pinky has the gun on Craig in the record store, and every time he's telling, like, now who the fuck you think you are coming in my record store? Who sent you here? And every time Craig tries to answer a question, shut up, just shut up, you better oh, say something again, shut up. And it's like, wait, you asked me a question, so you do, do you want me to answer or not? That's essentially what Jasmine was doing to Andy the whole time. Didn't I tell you to stay away from him? Look, I'm sorry. You're what? You're what? I'm sorry. This is just like on the haves and the half knots after Colby got beat down. And then Veronica was like, say you're sorry. I I'm sorry. Now say you're sorry to him for what you did to my his brother. I'm sorry for what your brother. Say it like you mean it. So that's essentially what was going on. I'm thinking like Jasmine. I, 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 I get it. The whole villain thing, getting revenge, a quick kill does not suffice you got to make somebody suffer before you kill him or it, it's just meaningless you might as well just have somebody kill him from a distance but it's like you want to make her suffer you want to make her feel vulnerable pretty much the way you felt it's like oh wait so didn't i tell you to stay away from my man what he gave you a ring too bigger than mine huh yeah okay it's like jasmine please i'm sorry shut up bitch just i don't know why and this goes to the end of the episode and i'll talk about that in just a minute Whenever Jasmine goes, bitch, it's like you could, there's, Crystal Lee, there's some venom in her mouth every time she says it because you could just feel it when she says it. <laughs> so, I was like, 
I was pissed. You, If you could have seen my face when I was watching the episode during the scene, I'm like, I was waiting for it. I'm like, what, what is Gary going to get up? Is Andy going to do something? Because as soon as she said, you know what? I think we all need to die. I'm like, if Jasmine dies, I'm going to punch this damn wall. So Jasmine, instead of pulling the trigger... Because Andy kept going, we need to call 911, we need to get him to a hospital. No, let him die. I'm sick of him anyway. He needed to die. And I'm just like, okay, let's see where this is going. So I'm like, okay, is she going to kill Andy and then herself? Which obviously we knew wouldn't happen based on the preview. But here we go. She decides to go over to Gary and start kicking him. Which leads to Andy getting out of bed and then attacking her from behind and they're fighting over the gun. A couple of shots are fired and my eyes were kind of, you know, I was covering my eyes. Kind of like, I don't want to see my boo get shot. But, you know, then I rewatched it because I'm just like, wait a minute. Andy's in her lingerie. This is just like when um she took off her dress in front of Paris and I'm just like, oh, shit. Now, I feel like I cheated on Jasmine because I'm like, okay, I don't know who to root for here because Jasmine, you know, she doing her thing. But Andy, I'm like, uh, can, can this fight go on a little bit longer? But then we go over to the title sequence. I'm like, ain't nobody got time. Look, I love the theme song, the opening intro, but ain't nobody got time for this shit. I need to see what happens. So just a little side note, cause I know everybody's been talking about it. Why hasn't Fatima gotten added to the opening credits? I do not know. Um, I was a little bit surprised myself because when I was watching the credits, I was like, oh yeah, we're going to see, uh, you know, we're going to see Fatima as the last sister. Oh, wait, we're not. Oh, okay. Now, look, I don't know for sure if this is how it's going to go down, but maybe, maybe until Fatima is quote unquote officially added to the group as a sister, Look, I know from the promos and whatnot, Fatima's up there because I think it's safe to say eventually she's going to be the the sixth ranger. You know, if you watch Power Rangers, she's going to be like the Tommy Oliver. She's going to be the extra ranger added to the team. It might take a little while for her to be accepted due to the whole Karen, Zach bull crap. But I think once she is, then maybe that's when they'll update the intro or they'll wait until season four. That's just a guess. I have no idea. It's just like when the Oval aired season two was like, wait, why is Gail missing? I don't know. Because she isn't in the season. House of Pain uh, season 10. Wait a minute. Uh, Jasmine and Janine aren't in the opening credits. Uh They are going to be in the season. But I just think they're probably waiting until Fatima is fully accepted in the group before she's added to the opening title. Again, just a guess. I wanted to address it because everybody's been asking me about it. All right. So, once the title sequence is over, we get to classic Andy. And this is kind of why I don't really like Andy, because she's kind of a Mary Sue. Mary Sue is basically kind of like a goody two-shoes, or everything involving the plot or story works to her favor. Andy was literally staring death in the face, because Jasmine had the gun pointed right in her face. Jasmine, no! Jasmine, no! And it... Nothing. She kept pulling the trigger. This was the equivalent of when Thanos, I am inevitable. And then he turns his hand around and his gauntlet is empty because Tony has the stones. And it's like, oh shit. Okay, look. Boo. I'm, I'm talking to you, Jasmine. Now, I've never chased somebody around for gun. I never broke into somebody's apartment you know, shooting them and shit. But if I'm in the middle of trying to take somebody out and I realize, damn, I'm out of bullets. That's the equivalent of buying something, an electronic device from the store, getting home and then realizing, fuck, batteries aren't included. The last thing I'm going to do when I'm trying to get revenge is allow the person to run away while I sit on the bed fiddling with the gun to try to get it working again. It's like, shit, did I hit the wrong button? Andy rushes to the dresser, gets like a metal tray, and then knocks her out. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? I'm glad she's not dead, but I'm like, what the fuck? So 
Andy in her lingerie grabs her robe and we hear her feet going pa, 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 because she's rushing to the front door because she checks on Gary first I think I uh, could be yeah and then she grabs her robe and goes to the front door and this is when oh shit now I tell I can see why people think it's a setup because when she opens the door two cops just so happen to be outside put your hands where I can see him put your hands look no you need to get to the hospital right now bam you need to calm down put your hands where I can see him Look, no, 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 no. My fiance's in there. It's like, what's going on? Somebody broke in. She shot. It's like, it reminded me of a Friday after next when Day Day and his dad and Craig got robbed by Santa in the alley. And then he runs to the donut shop to get the cops. Like, Santa Claus, you know, he robbed me and my dad and, and Craig in the alleyway. You know, he almost tied us up, wrecked us and fucked us. He put a gun out. He was like, ah. That was pretty much Andy in that situation. So when Andy's like fighting to go back into the room because the one cop goes to check things out because like yeah she's unconscious my fiance is in the uh in the bathroom he needs to get to the hospital that one cop that was trying to like stop Andy from moving is like yo he was trying to cop a feel I knew he was I'm just like oh here we go he's probably going to ask for Andy's phone number when this is all said and done all right so let me talk about the next Andy scene because Andy is just look we're almost 10 we're damn this is almost 10 minutes to the review and I'm already in the, I'm still in the first scene but Andy is worried. It's like, I want to see Gary. Why isn't he in the hospital? I'm like, she's asking all the right questions that I'm asking as well. So while she's trying to get information, the cop is like, man, please just, just answer the questions for us. Tell us what happened. But why is he in the hospital? I want to see him. Why isn't anyone telling me about Gary? What's going on? It's like, and I love the first, what was like the second question? Were you having an affair? No, that's his ex-wife. And I'm like, Andy, you know good and hell well. So, the final scene is Jasmine being taken away in handcuffs. And I love this because, look, this ain't over, bitch. This ain't over. And then as it's like, ah! She had to get in that Jasmine screech one last time. And then even when she's completely off screen, out of frame, bitch! And I'm like, come on now. So Andy's like, where is he? What's going on? And then it's like, ma'am, you can come in to see him. I don't want to see him all bloody. There's no blood. And I'm thinking, what the, f wait, what? So Andy gets up and then goes into the room and then she's shocked. And I don't know what the hell she saw. A lot of people are saying Gary is fine. He's just sitting on the bed because this was a setup. Like if there was no blood, which makes no sense because in the end of the final episode last season, we saw blood coming down his chest. What the hell kind of setup is this? That'll be its own separate video. Okay, so we talked about the Andy stuff. Okay, let's talk about Sabrina now. Sabrina, as beautiful as she is, was not, I was not a fan of her this episode. So... This episode did a weird thing because it skipped around so much. I I understand that in movies and shows, especially in Tyler Perry stuff, a lot of things are happening at the same damn time. But I was really confused. So that's why I decided to do this review differently because if I jumped around explaining everything, we would have been talking here for like two hours. So Sabrina had kicked his like. She had just closed the door because Calvin had just left and she's upset. Jacoby's like, wow, okay, so let's finish up, baby. Okay, you need to go. Wait, what? Yeah, you need to go. And I'm like, Sabrina, are, are you really doing this right now? So she's upset. She's kicking Jacoby out because of what happened with Calvin. Wait, you you get re you really mad? You're taking out on me because that guy, the one who was messing around with another man, it's like I heard Maurice. Look, that ain't even like it. That isn't what that that isn't even what happened. You need to get dressed and leave. So then Sabrina goes into uh, what was it, her bedroom or whatever, and she calls Danny. Danny is chilling in a tub with Preston. Cowboy is now a sailor, and. I think she talks about how the phone's going off. That's the house phone. I ain't, I ain't pay that in months. I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking, wait, did Preston pay that bill? So Danny does what Sabrina does, or should I say Danny did what she shouldn't have done, which was answer the phone, just like Sabrina did what she shouldn't have done in the finale, which was open the door and Calvin was there. 
So Sabrina's on the phone, and Sabrina's doing the same old thing. She's just whining and complaining. Calvin came over. He was upset, and, uh, you know, me and Jacoby were in the kitchen, and now I just sent him home, and I need some advice. Danny's like, bump. Look, I'm paraphrasing, but there's really not much to say. Danny's like, look, you know what you want. You think you're confused, but you're not. So I ain't got time for this. I'm with my man. Beep. (laughs) I ain't even mad, though. I ain't even mad, though. So, curiously enough, um, well, I might as well talk about Calvin. So, Maurice is just chilling, and Calvin comes in. He's upset about the Sabrina situation, and now Maurice is acting shocked because Calvin went on over there unannounced, and I'm like, well, Maurice, in the last episode, you literally, it's like, the la- that's why I said the finale was so bad and because there were so many character contradictions. So in the finale, Maurice is telling Calvin not to give up. Just give her some time. Uh, you need to do something spontaneous. Do something different. You know, you need to take charge. And I'm like, wait, what? So then in this episode, he's acting completely surprised about Calvin going over there unannounced when it's like, wait, Maurice, I could have sworn you knew what Calvin was doing in the last episode. So Calvin is all confused about why he still likes her and everything like that. And then he decides to go back and I'm like, wait, what? And yeah, Maurice has some funny one liners because Calvin was explaining, you know, I went up in there and then, you know, old boy from the bank, he was up in the refrigerator naked. (sighs) Wait, he was naked. How was he naked in the refrigerator? I need details. Are you going to beat me? Oh, yeah, that's right, because Calvin came in mad, and Maurice's like, what, are you going to beat me? I'm like, Maurice, shut up. He's like, ooh, I wish I was a condiment shelf in that refrigerator. So, in any case, Sabrina is sad, and I think that she gets a phone call from Maurice, and Maurice is talking about the situation and the fact that Calvin's coming over. So, um, she gets up out of her bedroom, and this is the part that confused the hell out of me. So we got uh, Jacoby who's sitting on the couch. I'm like, wait, did he come back? Or is he still here? Or, or what's going on? Because of the fact that I didn't know how much time had passed. So yeah, you had Maurice on the phone with uh, Sabrina. And then Sabrina gets out of her room. Jacoby's dressed and, you know, it's like, wait, I thought I told you to leave. Like, look, well, I thought you just needed a couple minutes to c- calm down. I got dressed. I just wanted to see how you were doing. Because she repeatedly says leave and he doesn't. And I'm just like, so is Jacoby just not leaving or what's going on here? So from there, Calvin actually... I think there's a knock on the door. Sabrina opens it up and Calvin actually decides to barge into her apartment and then tell Jacoby, look, bro, you need to leave. You need to get out of here. And I'm just like, what the hell, Calvin? Like, it would have been completely different if, let's say, Sabrina repeatedly was telling Jacoby to leave, but he's like, look, I ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to talk to me like that. You ain't going to disrespect me. Like you tell me to come, you know, I come over, you know, I do all this. It would have been different if he was being hyper aggressive. And then like Calvin decided to like burst in and save her. That was different than him rolling up in there. Like he owned the place. And I was waiting for a throwdown. And we know on the trailer, Jacoby going to pop him upside the jaw. So that's going to happen in the bank. But in this scenario, I'm like, Calvin, you don't belong here. So Jacoby decides to leave. And then Calvin basically puts Sabrina in her place. But I feel like this was completely out of order. Like the this was a great scene because Calvin was telling Sabrina everything we've been saying about Sabrina. But at the same time, I don't like how we got to this scene because it there's just been such a lack of continuity from how Calvin felt towards the end of season two, what happened in the season two finale and what we got in the season three premiere. You, you're just persuaded to everybody. And it's like, you know, you let everybody else's opinions make you decide certain things. And he rightfully says, you believe all these rumors, you believe everybody else, but you never believe me. And then they go back to the night where he mentioned he wanted to be in a relationship I, th- I heard you were doing crystal meth. And I'm like, oh my God. I get why Calvin's upset. And then basically Calvin's like, you know what? I'm done. That's it. I'm leaving. 
I'm glad Calvin got that off his chest. But again, this scene did not make context in the terms of how we got to the scene. So, okay. Um, all right. So that's all we got to say about Sabrina in this episode. And like I said, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Danny... Oh, I'm sorry. I actually skipped over this part. Danny with the bonnet on. I, I like that, especially with the whole Monique bonnet thing that's been, you know, in the news recently. I just like the fact that we had that kind of, I know this wasn't a nod to that because this was filmed back in like January, I think, or whatever. But in any case, I just love the fact you got Preston in bed, Danny with the bonnet. So I think Danny sneaks away to get on the phone with Sabrina and they have a conversation. And it, just like I said before, look, get over the whole Calvin crap. You make a choice right now. You know what you want and that's it. So Danny was winning this entire episode because I'll talk about it more because I think the next characters I need to talk about are Karen, Zach, Fatima, and Aaron. And then we're done. But basically, there are multiple women in this show who get so many men coming to running through their house apartment. Danny was the only one living her best life, and I ain't mad at her for it. She like, F all this drama. I'm chilling with my man. Okay, so first we got Zach going over to Karen's. I'm like, oh my God, Zach, just don't, don't do this. But turns out he's actually there to deliver $5,000 because of the fact that, hey, look, over the years, $77,000. You know I'm good with numbers. The debt I owe you from, you know, like uh, food, rent bills money you hooked me up with basically i'm paying you back sally may you ain't gotta call me no more you ain't gotta send me no letters i'll pay you back in installments and we're good so thankfully karen finally admits to knowing about the credit card stuff yeah i saw the information from the bank so kind of like calvin telling all sabrina like oh yeah yeah you believe everybody else but you won't believe me when i say i didn't do it it's like yeah well i know i know i know so basically from there um I was proud of Zach because he's like, look, I'll, I'll pay you back in installments. Don't worry about it. I'm working now. And then before he leaves, Karen's all like, so when did you start seeing her? Look, I ain't got to tell you a damn thing. My boy rolled out there and I loved it because, again, she didn't need to know shit. It ain't her business. Zach done moved on. And I'm like, I was proud of it. My chest was sticking out. I'm like, that's that's a true player right there. That's a true player. Do your thing, Zach. That's the thing with somebody that you mistreated. And again, Zach was not a saint to her either. You see somebody else doing better. Now it's like, see, you missed out. All right, so Zach went on. So then he goes over to Fatima's place. I'm like, wait a minute, Zach, what, what's going on here? So he stops by. And Fatima's like, how'd you get in? I still got a key. I want the key back. So they have a little conversation. It's pretty much a back and forth. I'm not really going to break it down because there really isn't much to say. I think there's more to say when Zach comes back again, but we'll get to that in a moment. So basically, she's like, to the left, to the left, everything you own in a box to the left. That's literally it. I mean, Fatima was playing the role of Beyonce and irreplaceable. That's literally what this scene felt like. Because Zach, like, wait, well, wait, you really want me to go, huh? So, you know, he sees his bags in the corner. He's about to, you know, uh, get his stuff and leave. And um, he's like, wait, wh where are you headed? And y'all were right. Uh, because there was the one scene in the promo where it looked like Fatima was in a dress. I'm like, wait, it looks like she's in a robe. And I'm like, she ain't going out nowhere. Because, like, no, it's like she puts on her shoes like, yeah, I know you're upset with me because your hair is different. I know that's what y'all chicks do. Whenever y'all upset, you change up your hair. It's like, you ain't got to worry about me, Zach. So, new dude walks in. He's like, oh, yeah, you look like a ball player, huh? Well, guess what? I used to play ball, too. But, you know, I you know I quit. So, you see, because of me, you got a job, you know, playing ball. Which is a nice nod to, you know, real life because DeVell actually was a football player back in the day. So, um... You know, you must not know about me. Because that was literally Zach. It's like he grabbed his bags, walked out. I can have another you in a minute, baby. So uh, Fatima's about to go out on a date. And I'm thinking to myself, that probably ain't going to go nowhere. Because you can tell Fatima's just kind of flexing in front of Zach. But it's out of a place of hurt as opposed to a place of, you know what? I'm really moving on. I'm done with you. All right. So... 
Let's see here. Fati Zach actually gets a phone call from Fatima because Fatima is back home from her date. And, you know, the dude's like, well, I'm glad you called me. And he starts to take off his uh, jacket. And she's like, no, 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 not tonight. I got to work in the morning or whatnot. What, for real? Yeah, I'll call you next week. Okay, next week. So he leaves. And thankfully, unlike Jacoby, dude just leaves. He ain't there to beg for five minutes. He's just about to leave. So um, she notices that uh, Zach had left his, well, left the uh, car alarm for the uh, truck for the company. And she's like, oh, damn, what'd he do? And then also noticed that he had left some money behind as well. And she actually calls him and says, wait, what are you doing? You left the alarm. You left this money. And then Zach is like, no, no, no. You keep that money because I'm done. I don't want any other woman to tell me that I just took, you know, basically I mooched off of them. So just consider that the money from when you let me stay with you and we're good. It's like, no, keep the money. You know what? Um... I love how they're kind of having a little debate on the phone. It's like, look, I ain't going back and forth with you. I literally felt like a nephew. It felt like a nephew Tommy prank phone call because that's like his greatest catchphrase right there. You know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to go back and forth with you on this phone. So basically, uh, Fatima's like, hey, I want to leave the money, uh, you know, taped to the door. It's like, look, don't you do that. Don't leave that uh, money taped to the door so somebody just walk by and take it. So he actually goes back to the uh, apartment and, uh, well, yeah, I'll come in. No, I'll leave it outside. So he's there to get the money and he's there to get the key or the alarm for the truck. So um, he stops by and he knocks on the door because she did tape it to the front. And look, can I come in? You got five minutes. I'm not going to lie. I felt like a majority of fans like, oh, yeah, they're about to get it on. They're about to go into the shower. And no, he ended up leaving again. I'll talk about their conversation, but he ended up leaving again. And I'm like, I actually like how they're kind of stretching this out. This is only the premiere. And if I'm not mistaken, this season is also 22 episodes like season two was. So there's no need to rush. A lot of stuff has happened and I'm glad they're kind of stretching it out. So basically... They have a very solid conversation, and I got to give props to the episode because Calvin and Sabrina, Aaron and Karen, um, Zach and Fatima, the men are allowed to talk about their feelings and the women listen to them. That's something we really haven't seen in Sisters all that much, where mainly I feel like this episode was about calling out the women for their shit. Not all of them per se. Well, you could argue that Jasmine was calling out Andy, but at the same time, I just like how the women are taking L's to an extent, not all of them, but Danny is over there chilling and I love it. So the thing about it is Zach wasn't an asshole. He wasn't a smart ass. He was speaking honestly. He's like, look, I want you both. Don't you know what it's like when you're confused? Because he actually brought it up over the phone, but Fatima wasn't trying to hear it. But I just like the fact that because Zach is like, look, you always talk about being honest and whatnot. And remember in season two, anytime Zach tried to bring up his ex, he didn't say Karen, but anytime he tried to bring up his ex, Fatima would shut it down. So it's like these two just need to have an adult conversation about what they are, what they want, because I feel like that's the biggest obstacle stopping them from being together. It doesn't have anything to do with Karen wanting to know anything. It doesn't have anything to do with the tension within the sisters group because Fatima was with Karen's ex, Zach and Fatima need to sit down and talk just like Sabrina needed to give Calvin, I wouldn't say the benefit of the doubt, but basically trust in what Calvin was telling her as opposed to what everyone else was telling her because that would have prevented a lot of drama. So I really liked the fact that they talked a lot about their feelings because I think, hell, even when Fatima got back home from her date, she was like, come on, Fatima, you know, Get back to yourself. Get, come on, girl. Basically, she was wrestling with the fact that she's still feeling Zach. Because remember, she had told the sisters group that she just dates to date. I mean, men do it. And I mean, what's the point of being attached? And hell, she even told Andy about the fact that, you know, one time, the basically the relationship that made her stop feeling, if you will, was the fact that it was somebody who had just broken up with her fiance. But then like a week later said, hey, I'm getting married. So 
Zach was the person who changed her. So she's not just going to bounce back from this. So it really is pretty good to see that she's wrestling with her feelings and her and Zach will come back together soon enough because we know in the trailer we're going to have sex at some point. So unfortunately for Zach, Fatima stays on her soapbox of, hey, I want you to leave right now. Okay, fine. So Zach is slow to kind of go, but, you know, he actually does leave and that's about it. So the final thing to talk about is uh, Karen. Like I talked briefly about the Zach thing, but this is really the last thing to talk about. So Karen calls Andy, doesn't get an answer. Of course, we know why. And uh, she gets a knock on the door and I'm like, wait, I know that ain't Zach. And it's drunk ass Aaron. He comes in. He's like, hey, I want you. He, you know, look, you need some coffee. Let me go in the kitchen. This fool gets naked and makes a pathetic fool out of himself. Like, this is season two Aaron, who was drunk because he was depressed over his wife and everything, who had killed an uh, ex-wife and everything. And it's like, you know, he's always like, you know, hey, let's wait until marriage. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then it's only when he's upset and drunk that he wants to have sex. Remember this cycle with Aaron. So pretty much, you know, he's like, you know, this is my fault. You know, this wouldn't have happened if I didn't make you wait and everything for sex and everything. Because remember, um, Karen wanted him bad. So th that was the thing about her and Zach having sex. It was probably, you know, mixed emotions and everything, you know, built up tension. But I want to say on Karen's end, it was probably more so tension because of the fact that she had been celibate with Aaron for so long. And remember, they were getting in at the hotel until Zach interrupted. But in this situation, she was really, really, really horny. So she let it, well, let it in with Zach. But, you know, uh, he's all upset and everything. And I mean, maybe I'll do a separate video on it, but maybe I won't. So it's just like, come on, man. This, I mean, you did walk in on him together you know Zach and Karen and then you talk with her and said you know what I'll give you some space so this goes back to how I just hate when characters are kind of inserted into the story where they don't belong Calvin and Aaron they could have been gone for a few episodes and that would have been good you know as opposed to Aaron just randomly popping up here when it's like yeah you should have stuck to your guns and given it more time because like you drove over here drunk and at least Karen wanted to make sure you didn't drive home drunk or anything so she was trying to sober him up a bit but uh, yeah, that was the scene I kind of like, I looked at it a second time and it was definitely emotional, but at the same time, it was the one scene I could have done without. So that was uh, when you're confused in a nutshell, pretty good stuff, 7.5, because there were some, you know, reasons for her, Sabrina, her, Aaron, come on, Calvin. But overall, this was a very good episode. And like I said before, Zach and Fatima. There's no need to rush it. We got plenty of time. But let me know your thoughts on this video in the comment section below. Um, as always, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App. I might have a couple, you know, discussion videos to do about the episode later this week. I've already done my trailer breakdown video. That'll be up soon. And uh, with that being said, I'll catch you all later.